And I found this interesting because it starts recording like when it says start recording, but it doesn't like start the timestamp when it says start recording. But I don't know. Skype needs to get yeah. a And we're back with the, with the Dr. Z show. Um, we were we took a week off because uh, partially because I'm super lazy, partially because we got uh, my sick, schedule. Yeah. That was that was several weeks ago when I got sick. Sick. Um, you got sick on Sunday. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. We were gonna record and then we didn't, and then we were gonna record again, and then we didn't, and then I got sick, and it was bad news. Um, but we have bad. lots of research and an interesting topic. What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about um, like loot systems and uh, like real the real world um, economy or like. Paying real money for in-game items, perhaps, as a as a topic. And actually, it as as we're talking about it right now, and as per the conversation that we definitely should have had on air, I'm realizing that we of all the games we talked about, we missed a huge one. Oh, we didn't mention RuneScape. Ah, uh, yes, because of the bond system now. <clears throat> ah, that's true. We didn't even I didn't even think about it. Wow. So, um in kind of as for the listeners, this was all sparked by we had made some comments about um gambling in relation to loot crates and that's the that's kind of like a subtopic of what we're talking about and that sparked us looking into like the Diablo 3 auction house debacle with a Blizzard actually like making a auction house where you could pay real money for in-game items. Um, you know, like four or five up to like a hundred bucks for an, a rare item in the game. Um, which was just... I, I didn't know about that, and I just recently have learned about it, and they shut it down, thankfully. But what they were hoping to do was yeah, they to were get real around. quick about that. Yeah, they were hoping to get around third-party services doing that to kind of like take control of that market, I guess. But it just ended up. Um, one of the reviews from a, a streamer was like, "Why they quit playing was they were like, I I bought a uh, <laughs> I bought a 3D dungeon crawler, not an auction house simulator." Hmm. Um, I think I think part of it. And like I'm gonna come to Blizzard's defense in this. Like I, I absolutely like do not like condone the auction house. Like that was stupid. Like, like what, what were you thinking? Like, but <clears throat> coming to Blizzard's defense a little bit, I think they're trying to. They were they, they're they were trying to control the in-game economy because like they had these like third parties doing it, and the player base like wasn't. Like, it wasn't there yet, because, like, a lot of people, you know, they did it as it, as the game came out. So, like, the play, they didn't have the player base that other games like Diablo 2 has now. Um, and so they, like, got a jump start on it and started to control the in-game economy. And if you're, if you're one of these people that, that is, like, a seasonal player and plays... You know, like to get the high scores or whatever, to get you know the, the top of the leaderboard. Like you need these items as soon as possible. Like you need these set items. You need to run these dungeons as soon as possible. And it became, and it's not pay to win because you can't like quote like win, but but in the in that sense, it became it became a pay to win game. Like you, if you paid for the most powerful items, you got them, you know, just like instantly, whatever. And then yep. you could, you know, you were better than everybody else suddenly. Yep. Um. Yeah, and as a comparison, uh, RuneScape um, is also kind of, kind of similar. It's a it's a loot based, mul- like multiplayer game um they introduced the in-game trading was a big thing and then um they a few years ago they introduced something called the grand exchange that allowed uh kind of like a market price to be set for all these different items um that would kind of fluctuate with what people were paying on average 
um, mm. for those items, uh, which is amazing. And it would let you trade with anyone in like any server. Um, you just put up the item that you wanted, how much you were going to pay for it, or like, you know, if you put up the item that you were selling, how much you wanted for it. Um, and the, the, the grand exchange system would just take care of it for you. Um, and it was, it was pretty sweet. Yeah. And like the, you... the introduction of the grand exchange was probably one of the, one of the best things that ever happened to RuneScape. Yeah. Um, but recently they introduced a system where you could buy a membership to the game, which was typically paid for with real money, um, with in-game money. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of... And it's a lot play. of in-game money, though. Yeah, it, it's, it is a it's lot. It's like, I think one bond is like 30 million or something like that, 30 million gold. Yeah. Um, and you can, uh, you could theoretically sell those bonds for real money. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know if this is like, uh, necessarily, uh, like the ethical implications of this. It's, I don't think that's quite as much gambling, but that's a, it's another place where there's, there's an intersection of real money and in-game things. Um, EVE Online was another one that was kind of mentioned as a, a EVE Online is nuts. <laughs> It is um, for those you, nuts. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, it's a it is a persistent. The description I saw was that it is a persistent world like MMO RPG with spaceships, um, and there are like people who are like dedicated to playing, and there's clans and resources and stuff. Corporations. Yeah, yeah, like entire corporations, like within the game, and like hierarchies, and there's. There have been multiple news articles of scandals where, uh, like, one of the biggest things was that someone from a rival corporation had infiltrated another corporation and rose through the ranks and then, like, deleted all of their resources. And it, like, represented a loss of, like, real-world money and time that people had put into this. Um, And it was just, like, you know, just... And the, the developers have said about... Uh, when things like that have happened in terms of, you know, protecting people, they're like, we're, they're like, they didn't do anything that was against the They're rules super hands-off. Of the yeah, they're like, we haven't done anything that was against the rules of the game. Like, the players didn't technically break any of the rules of the game. They didn't cheat, but they did break the trust of other players. And so it's like, you know, and they're like, we're not here to guarantee people's trust, like, as a company. Which I think is a, I don't, it, like that kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's like it's your fault. Yeah, it's like maybe maybe don't spend real world money on a game where things can be free. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Man, Eve is Eve's crazy. Oh man, nuts. Um, we're not here to talk about Eve though. Holy crap! So otherwise, we'll be here yeah. for forever. There's, and there's articles, there's a, a, honestly a lot of things that we talk about. Hopefully it will spark people reading up on them. Um, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, because if you want to know more, go look it up. There's, there, there's already a lot of resources about, and that's, that's how we have learned about a lot of this too, and are even talking about it, is we went and read about it. Or just heard about it through being nerds. Yeah, well, you know. Anyway, so let's let's get on with it. The the article that you read that was actually on GameSpot. It was not Polygon. The the mega long one. Well, what? Let's start with that. There's... The one you sent me. The mega long one about uh, Battlefront Two. Oh, that was. Oh wait, 2017 Battlefront 2. Not uh... no, 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 not that one. No, there was a there was another one that I was reading about how EA lost its soul, and that was from Polygon. Oh, and that was okay. like that was Talking like two different. Multiple... Yeah, it was um, yeah, it was like um, it was like multiple chapters. Uh, it was in like chapter eight. It was crazy. Because okay, I started well, reading it, and I was like, wow. Let's talk gonna... about the one you sent me. 
Yes. On games. Or on, on GameSpot. That that long one about uh about uh, what you call it? Battlefront two. Uh, Battlefront two. Not old two thousand eight. But yeah. terrifying. Uh, Those games were good. Um, so Battlefront two. Speaking of real world money and in game items, they EA, the developers introduced a system where it was you know it's it's a like a, it's a match based shooter i take it battlefront 2 yeah yeah i mean think like i mean like any you know first person or third person shooter yeah um and your characters can as you play the game you can get loot crates and these loot crates contain components that will increase your character's uh, power. Simply, like their their level. Um, yeah. And give put it, put it like, et And those items, those components uh, are you know from rated from like common to rare um, kind of items. And what happened during the beta was people could pay real money to buy these loot crates in game um and the question was raised of like is this gambling is this pay to win um like and a lot of people said yeah that is gambling like you're you have no idea what's going to be in these loot crates you have no idea if it's going to be for the character class that you want and you're paying real world money for it um and you know like getting uh you know like legendary items and and other things and um they they eventually they the, so in response to those complaints they changed a little bit they made it so you could only get the legendary items from actually playing the game um but you could still buy loot crates for like common to uncommon to rare um with uh like with real world money and then people were like no this still sucks and they're like so then they got rid of it entirely um but not the whole thing but not before like like uh let and um my fiance had mentioned that apparently they whoever wanted this to change contacted a bunch of like they tried to get the message out to parents of people Mm. so that the parents like actually complain and you know not just you know the as much as game companies listen or, or don't listen to their player base although you know most of the time they will you know from a, a legal perspective i think they're going to listen to like pressure from you know especially if you're marketing towards a younger audience you're going to listen more to the pressure from the like adults who are purchasing these games for those kids the other thing it was the mayor of somewhere or some city council representative Something like he like brought up that it was that it was like he was going to pursue legal action against this. Was that the state representative from Hawaii? Yes, that one. Okay, I was trying to remember who it was and where they were from. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the state representative in Hawaii was like, "This is illegal. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, you know, I'm gonna take legal action and." You know, stop this. <clears throat> and it it's interesting that we're like kind of on his side about this because like anytime like scandals come up, people are usually like I don't know, I would say they're like pretty pissed about it. Like don't it's sort of the like don't talk about things you don't understand kind of deal. Yeah. Like don't like if you don't know anything about video games, like don't make laws about video games. See what I'm saying? Like it's that it's that kind of for me it's that kind of thinking. Yeah, that makes sense. Um but the the interesting in the little like press conference that he had, they had um multiple they had they had perspectives from multiple people. They had 
him they had this mom of i guess someone who like plays video games talking about stuff and then they had someone who like actually is like a pretty avid gamer like who had played the game um talk and someone one of the people asked like one of the people in the audience asked him like you know you you like video games like why i guess like like what's what's your perspective on like what this means for other people or in in a way kind of like well if you can benefit from this as a gamer playing this game why should you care about other people's opinion about it It was like some somehow the wording of that question and he he said well i have a two-year-old daughter and she's gonna grow up in a world and so he's like i care about this because i don't want games to have this trend you know for yeah. her. whether she's a gamer or not if in the event that she is he doesn't want her to live in a world where it's okay there's this kind of like toxic interconnect between you know gaming and just i don't know just money i guess I, although you know you have spent money to, to, to buy the games and to pay the people who develop them and everything, but you don't necessarily want a pay-to-win system. At least if you're a gamer. If you're a developer, sure. You're fine. Because with that. a lot of things a lot of things in life like are are already pay to win. Like you have you have better opportunities as someone who was born into wealth. Like so in that sense, like, life is pay to win. And if video games are, like, an escape from, you know, from your life, like, take a step back and say, well, do we want it to be the same? Yeah. I don't know. I'm getting way off topic mentioning I, that. I, Whoa. A lot of these questions, too, I, I would love to hear comments from people um, on a video about oh yeah like yes please like one yeah like do you, like is that like do you is is pay to win fair unfair in your eyes is it does it inherently degrade the value of stuff there's there's a lot of um pay for cosmetics in games which i think is great i you know i think it it uh it helps the it helps the game company continue to get revenue, and it helps them support uh, the de- like the development of the game, um, like like Fortnite and League of Legends. I think are examples of that, at least from from my life. Um, yeah, I'm I'm 100 in favor of like of of cosmetics only. Like, yeah. Like, if something is 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 cosmetics, yes, one hundred percent. Like, sure. Like, pay pay to get cosmetics. Like, they don't help you. They don't. That I mean, sometimes they hurt you. Like, depends on like what kind of what kind of game you're talking about. But like, don't. You know, don't give people items that give you or that give them an advantage over other players just because other players like have more money. Yeah. Um, kind of a weird perspective on that though is sometimes I like pay to win systems and even knowing that things are broken because and this is me being the guy who likes the conduit um i like using the garbage weapons to beat people who are really good at the game who've like paid a lot of money for it so i'm just like "Eh, like you paid all that money and i still killed you (laughs) like that's that's my perspective sometimes you're a monster (laughs) so you know, I guess that doesn't make the pay to win system a good system, but no, 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 no yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Coming from someone who's not willing to pay for that and not able to most of the time, admittedly, um, but even if I had the money, I still wouldn't because it would feel wrong. I think, like, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pay this money to get the best gun in the game that's like really overpowered or whatever. It's like, 
no, that's like when everyone's super, no one is like kind of deal. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I I like I, I like it when games have nuance and like variety. Um, and so it is and, the spice of life. Yeah. So it's and I and I feel like when you have pay to win systems, there often there's often like a the variety goes down because there's only a few things that are like overpowered that you know if you want to quote unquote stay competitive, like ev- you have to buy. Um, and I if, I don't know. I also um this is just once again me kind of ranting, kind of sharing my own experience. Um, like, I played League of Legends for a really long time. It's a free game. Um, but I spent... The uh, Penny Arcade comic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I League forget Legends what is one great because it's, it, He says, League of Legends is great because it's free. It's so free. And then they, they stop, and then they say, so how much money have you spent on League of Legends? And the guy goes, I have spent $8,000. <laughs> Um, but I, I spent money on it because I thought to myself, like, okay, any other game that I have, like, played a lot, you know, I have usually spent, like, 50 to 60 bucks on it, you know, just because that's usually the price of a a console game, or, or 30 bucks if it's, like, for the Game Boy, for, like, a handheld, whatever, um, so I was like, okay, I will spend fifty dollars on this game because I want to support the developers because I want this to continue because I enjoy it. Um, and I, I feel like that's once again that's still different. From, and that was just for you know for like skins for characters. It wasn't. It didn't. It didn't give me any benefit in game. It just was me like wanting to support the developer. Um, and so I, I'm definitely. Is long story short, I'm. 100% in support of the like cosmetics only because it it drives it it fulfills the point of driving the economy of the game without ruining the game model. That's all. Okay, so let's sort of backtrack a little bit. What what do you think about the uh, like are, are loot crates gambling like the the sort of the question that 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 spurred this? I think there's, I think under a technical definition, no, because gambling is you put money in and there's a chance that you get nothing out of it. Like, you can, you know, like, you could uh, run a slot machine a bunch and never win. Like, that's that's possible. Um, but, and this is kind of the argument for, like, in, like, our trading card games gambling, um, you, when you pay money, you actually you do get something like you still get something out of it right it might not be what you want but you still get something so it's kind of under that technical definition no it's not gambling but i think it encourages a gambling mindset is and i think that was what you know some like the the lawmaker in hawaii like he call he might have even called it gambling just straight out but more mm-hmm. to the point he was kind of like this will build kind of instincts and habits in them to as like kids playing these games with kind of loot crate models um where they are, can pay real money for it like they will you know it's like oh okay like i'm i'm just gonna keep paying and paying and paying and paying until i get what i want out of it Instead of like, I'm gonna pay. I don't know. I, like that. Uh, this raises weird questions in my mind. Of like, is that just how hobbies are? 
like you just keep paying until you get what you want out of it. <laughs> like I don't know. I mean, not every hobby is a midlife crisis. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. Try. So, and I mean, that's like, and that's part of it is like, you know, how, how long are you going to keep up this, this hobby? Yeah. Like, how long are you going to keep playing magic? Like, it's that kind of, I guess that kind of thinking that's sort of like. There is. I think this kind of goes back to kind of a, uh, I think we've intertwined this concept a, a little bit with um, game balance. Um, so if you have, if you have a, I, I think I, I'm, I play magic and so I'm, I'm, I think have, I'm heavily biased, but I, I would say that it's, it is a, the, the, the wizards of the coast, the developers, they do a good enough job of balancing the game that like even paying money into it if you if you construct something well it is still viable um but i've heard complaints about Yu-Gi-Oh as a card game because they've said that and i haven't heard these complaints about um like the Pokemon trading card game but i think it has a little bit of similar issues um Older cards just aren't good um, because the game has developed to have more and more mechanics that are just new and don't interact well with older mechanics um, to a point where it's like, okay, like you have to buy the new stuff in order to play because if you play with something older than the new stuff, it's going to be broken. And so I don't know exactly how that works with Loot Crate systems. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to be balanced, but if, you know, let's say you introduce a new, and I've heard complaints too about like Hearthstone, like uh, apparently Hearthstone's kind of gone in like waves of popularity, um, but it's like, okay, this, all the new stuff is completely broken and you have to keep paying money to enjoy playing the game, I guess, is kind of the, like, that's the complaints I've heard from people who've quit stuff like that, where they have really enjoyed the game. They've spent a long time on it, but then they realize, like, they kind of have this epiphany, I guess, of like, oh wow, like, this is just going to keep going forever. Like, I'm, I'm never going to be on top of it. Like, no matter how much time I've put into this, I'm never going to be good because I have to continuously pour like money and time into, I guess, learning the new things that are going on. Um, which is just, I mean, in some ways, that's the nature of some things, like. You know, if you want to consider yourself, I don't know. I think some people, if you consider yourself a gamer, sometimes it's like it, like you're the nature of the beast. Yeah, you're you're on top of all of the new stuff. You're you always want to find out what's coming out and be familiar with it. Um, but I do think there are some people who consider themselves gamers still who maybe they. have Maybe they're just really, really good at Pac-Man, and they have been for years, and they don't have no idea what Assassin's Creed is, but they're like, "Oh yeah, I'm a gamer. Like I love Pac-Man." And they're like, "Wait, what?" But I think in the gaming community, you'd still accept them. Like you might not be able to talk to them about the new stuff, but you. Yeah, no, of course. Like, and that's that's the thing about uh, that. I'm I'm always on my fiance about this. Like, <clears throat> like nerds on whole. And like, I, of course, like we've had this, we've had this conversation before, like with with Arena, and we will continue to have that conversation. Believe you me. But like, on the whole, nerds are some of the most accepting people ever that I that I personally have ever interacted with. Oh yeah. Like, I mean. What do, you, what do you think? I think, yeah. Uh, and you can you can definitely get into debates. You can get into heated debates with people over 
things that you care about. Um, you know, like, I, there's, I think, I don't know for sure, but in culture, in stuff like Big Bang Theory, I, I'm not sure if Big Bang Theory does this, but it seems like the show that would, they paint, sometimes they paint a picture of like, oh, you're either into Star Wars or Star Trek, and if, if someone doesn't know the difference, then they're like a plebe. Um, but I don't, I've never anyone, seen anyone. Anyone, like, and I've, I've actually seen people do this. Anyone that does that, the quarter in the jar is a fuckhead. <laughs> like, you're the worst. Like, for doing that. Yeah. I've never seen it happen myself. I mean, and that's good. And that part of it is because you are... I feel like you're very... This isn't true, but you're very selective of the people you hang out with. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's not... It's, that's 100% not true, but... I, I would say I don't have a... I wouldn't consider myself a social butterfly. I think I do maybe have a, a wide circle of friends slash acquaintances, but I'm not often I'm not often like hanging out with a lot of people at a time. I'm usually only hanging out with like three to four people at a time. If that makes sense. Yeah. And and this is something kind of that that I've been thinking about and when we were, we were talking about your wedding and like who's, you know, getting invited and, and like I've been thinking about it more and more is like, remember just before you went on your mission, how your mom kind of gathered uh, me and I, I guess I'll call them out, me and Keelan and Connor and sort of all of us together in a circle in the in the kitchen, and she was like talking to us like about how thankful she was, that, you know, we were all there together to like see you off, and that we had we had become, you know, kind of like like another another part of the family. Yeah, and and so that's like. You, you, I would say that there are a lot of people that that would consider you their friend, but that you're not, or that you would consider a friend, but you're not like close with them. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's that's super true. Yeah, and I, that's I, I mean that's fine. I, like all I, your friends I, don't have to be close friends, but yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who I like. I consider them my friend, but then when I actually go to talk to them after years, I'm like, I, I don't even know what to talk to you about. Because <laughs> yeah, we, we were friends, like, I mean, in sentiment, like, a situation. Like, there was right. a situation where we were together and we were friends, but now that we're, neither of us are in that situation, it's kind of like, whereas uh, the, like, long-term friends that I have, we were in lots of situations together. And so, uh, I think, Yeah. Yeah, I I see, I see what you're saying. Um and it's it's like going with the sentiment like you realize that sometimes you're only friends with people because you saw them every day. Yeah. Kind of kind of deal. Which is you know, which is 100% true. Like sometimes you're only friends with people because you you sort of have to be because it's inconvenient for you to not be their friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see what I'm saying? Like, if you have a class together, or, like, you know, whatever, and you have to, you know... Yeah. But, um, you know, kind of like a... bringing it back a little, I think part of the reason that their culture may may like feel or maybe just even is more accepting is because you have all recognized that you've put a lot of time into caring about something and when you find other people that 
have also cared about something, or maybe they care about something that's slightly different, but that's still on the same, like, uh, topic to a degree. Um, you, you have, you instantly have a connection, one, but then two, you also have a lot of, I mean, that connection also just has a lot of things to talk about, like, um, you know, common interests. Yeah. So like shared interests rather. Yes. Yeah, so let, let's say you really like comics and maybe there's someone who's read all of the Batman comics. Maybe there's someone who's read like all of the Green Lantern comics and you know, you you can either be like, oh all of the Batman oh, comics. Holy or <laughs> Yeah, you can either be like, oh well, every okay. single one. They're they're di- <laughs> uh they're different. Um or you can be like, oh wow, like tell me more. And I think that's one of the things that often feels so accepting and great about like quote unquote nerdy things is that more often than not, people are like, tell me more. Like they want to know about the things that you care about. Even if you haven't like, even if they're maybe not asking about like you as a person and, and that's, that's like another topic entirely of like, like mental health and acceptance and, you know, like, you know, social development, whatever, but like you you feel like you have a place and I, that's mm-hmm. what you know kind of going back to arena's comments um it's it it feels like home because you have people to talk to about things that you care about even if those things don't like you know i don't know maybe like pay the bills or get you food or or whatever sometimes they do if your friends are like hey like let's go out to eat like Oh, you don't have cash on you? Sure, I'll buy. Like, you know, sometimes that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, wait, small anecdote though. Uh, a there we kind go. Of, you know, um, there was one time when we were out late at a, a local, there's a, a game store um, back in Virginia, uh, like Curio, Curio Cavern. We were all there late one night, um, or at least it might have just been like me and Connor. Um, but was it everyone? I'm trying to remember. But like, I don't know. If you guy, tell the story, I might remember. Okay, so this guy, uh, this guy, like, made an announcement. Um, like he walked, he walked in, and like, you know, got everyone's attention. And was like, "I'm going to McDonald's." Does anyone want anything? Yeah. Does anyone want anything? He's like, you know, just give me the cash for what you want, and I'll and I'll get everyone's orders. Yeah, he and came so, back with like 80 bags of McDonald's. Like he came back with like a ridiculous amount of mcdonald's yeah and so <laughs> and connor got chicken nuggets it was great um that's <laughs> uh, um i just i remember that because connor like was just so happy to have those chicken nuggets and it was amazing um i've never seen anyone so happy about chicken nuggets like in my entire life and it was have, it was, have oh. claire have claire tell you the story about the one time that my blood sugar went low while we were at swing Oh okay. <laughs> I might I might bring her on record and have her tell this story. But... Oh nice. Oh man. Okay. Anyway, back. Let's back up a little bit. Let's get back. Just on as top. a small example, it was a big big nerdy event. Everyone was hanging out, and some guy was like kind enough to think about how everyone was hungry. I was like, you know, they they're in the middle of something. Not everyone wants to leave like what yeah. they're in the middle of. But they're hungry, and so he, you know, went and, and did that for everyone. So, um, yeah. So it's just, just, just a little. Yeah, thing. it was nice of him. What a nice yeah. man. Anyway, so let's back way up and get back on topic. Way, yeah. way up. The way back. No way back up. From the the monster cat. Anyway. So. I. I I don't like. The way. EA runs their loot crates. Except for. Apex Legends. Yes. Because every single EA. Game before this has run their loot crates like pay to win gambling 
style. Like, like get, you know, buy a bunch of whatever. Get, you know, get the loot crates and open them and maybe you'll get the good items. If you don't get the good items, you know, pay a bunch more real money and buy a bunch of like loot crates and open them up and then maybe you get the items so on and so forth like forever and ever yeah but the way the way overwatch does it the way apex legends does it and the way that some other games do it where you're only getting the cosmetic items like yeah someone has probably spent five thousand dollars on fortnite getting every cosmetic item in the game and in my opinion, if you do that, you have a problem. Oh, like you have a you have a problem. Yeah. Well, on the flip side, I mean, it's your money. Yeah, like, like use it when you need it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have the structured settlement, but I need cash now. <laughs> Those words like definitely came out of my mouth without me thinking, like at all. Um, You've made a horrible mistake. Yeah, now it's stuck in my head. <laughs> Call JG when <laughs> points. We're not points. sponsored. <laughs> no, absolutely not. And if if we were, we're not. If JG when sponsored us though, that would be so random. Most people, it's like, oh, like check out Blue Apron. It's the best ever. Like. Or like I made my website with Wix. Like, stop, <laughs> stop. Sorry, I, I, what you're I doing right now. Box. Stop doing it. <laughs> I just, I'm just calling them out. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the the cosmetic the cosmetics are, I mean they're they're just that they're cosmetics, and. I mean, it. I've been I've played games where I've been like, oh, like that, you know, cosmetic item, whatever that skin, like it looks so cool, like, you know, I wish I could have it, but then I've been like, wait, I have bills, I shouldn't buy that. Yeah. But some people, like you know, you you have mommy and daddy's credit card, and you just spend wildly. Like on ridiculous things that you don't need, and what what gets me and what becomes like a huge point for me about this is, say say you're playing you know Call of Duty. Say let's say you know the newest Call of Duty, whichever one it is, Call of Duty Black Ops Four. Let's say you're playing Call of Duty Black Ops Four, and you spend I don't know, give me give me a random number to spend on a game. Uh, seventy-eight Say seventy-eight dollars. Seventy-eight dollars. That's a, that's a worryingly specific amount of money. Well, let's let's add a zero to that. Let's say you spend seven hundred and eighty dollars on on loot crates or cosmetics or whatever. Dang um, it, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> you found out about my my secret. Black Ops, I don't know, cosmetic item purchasing? <laughs> I don't own Black Ops. You know, the, you know the phrase, quit while you're ahead? No. I've, or what, I've there never... wasn't a point where you were ahead. Quit while you're behind. <sighs> anyway. I was trying to make a point. And the point I... I'm trying to make is... Let's say you spend all that money on on cosmetic items, whatever. Reticles in Black Ops Four. I mean, okay, sure. Let's say you spend yeah. let's say you spend seven hundred eighty dollars on loot crates. Let's get to the point. Say you spend seven hundred eighty dollars on loot crates. In ten years, are you still going to be playing Black Ops Four? Like, what do you what do you think? Like, what are your what are your thoughts here? Do you, do you I, see where it, like this? So this isn't like a I I don't know if this is a a mixing up of like cause and effect and things like that, 
but I would say, yeah, like, um, unless you have an, unless you have some kind of epiphany where you're like, oh, like, what have I been doing with my life? Like, this is, unless you hit a wall where you're like, this is not rewarding. Why did I spend so much money on this? I think you're going to keep playing the game because there's either some cost fallacy where you're like, well, I've sunk all this money into it. I might as well keep playing. Or there's just, I love this game and I'm going to keep spending money on it because I love playing it. I think those are kind of the, the three three options for what happens when someone spent that much money on something. Okay. I like see I see where you're going with that. Um And this is like here's here's case in point right now cuz I'm I'm noticing it cuz I'm looking at it of course but Age of Empires 2 is so popular that they released DLC, what was it, 12 years later? And it sold, like, gangbusters. Like Age of Empires 2? Yeah. What? They, they released HD Edition. Everyone bought it, because it's amazing. And they released, like, DLC packs for it, essentially. And it sold, like, gangbusters. Like, everyone bought like these like dlc packs because they added like extra new units and new like civs and they added all this content to the game people were like holy crap like i'm about that life that's wow i had no idea really yeah it definitely seems like something i would have told you about but i don't know maybe it it depends on when it happens there's there's like there's periods of our life where just depending on when we talk and when events are happening that we talk about them. That's true. I agree. I think it's the most accurate description of like, even though we're real close, like why we don't talk about things. Because they just don't come up. Or or we have that weird thing where we've like assumed like, oh, we must have talked about this. Yeah. Or I think I used to do this, or maybe, I mean, maybe I still do it, who knows. Um, Where I, like, I'm certain that I've told somebody something, or I'm certain that I've had this conversation, where I've, like, actually not had that conversation, I've just thought about having that conversation with somebody. And it leads to this weird disconnect. Yeah, I forget what that is, but there's a um, th- there's a really interesting study about uh, people's memory, and um, people like record it. People wrote in a journal right after a significant event. Um, they did a study, and then they talked to them about the event like five years later, asked them to recall it, and then they had them look at their own journal entries and compared the discrepancies. And the people were, like didn't believe their own journal entries. They're like, "But that's not how I remember it. That's impossible." <laughs> no, it's like, nope. Yeah, like. Like, we don't know squat. We don't remember anything. Well, Claire will be happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, not that this is a podcast about memory. But I thought it was a... I don't remember what this podcast is about, actually. No one... <laughs> uh, I've, I've seen too many, like, Twitch streamers, and they just... It's kind of weird seeing them because they talk to the Twitch chat, but they're alone. And they're like, chat, 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 tell me. Chat, tell me things. Like, it, like it's a person. Oh, I think you mean like you've seen them in real life. Like, I've seen too many. Like, what? Oh. I was like, where are you going with this? No, I no, I mean, like, you know, just like videos of, of people playing games. Oh, okay. So, here, here. If you're a Twitch streamer. Aha! Uh-huh. And you are on, like, Patreon, or you have some subscription service, or whatever, like, people pay you to play games. It makes sense that you're going to buy these cosmetic items. Because you, or, like, buy these, like, loot crates or whatever, because you are catering to your fans. You're, You're buying a product for their benefit. Because they're they're watching you, in, in whatever whatever it is. I'll be watching you. 
Not the creepy way. Not like that. But Every step you take. that is the creepiest song ever. Stop. It, really is. it is so creepy, except when it's in that vine with the goose. Um, it's still creepy though. Never mind. Point. So, so it, say your audience is like, oh, we want you to have this helmet that looks like, you know, a skull. You know, I'm just trying to pull like the most basic example I can out of thin air. Like, and you're like, oh, well, like I wouldn't spend money on that. And like in Twitch, say someone tips you like $10 or whatever, the, co- the cost of this item. You're like, well, you know, now you kind of have to. Like, you're obligated to do that for the community that supports you. Just interesting points. Right? Are you or or are you not? Like I would say I would say if you know in that specific example where someone like directly points out they're like, Hey, buy this item and you're like, No, and everybody else in the chat is like, Yeah, buy this item and then they like tip you enough money to buy the item. Are you obligated then to buy the item? I would say you're not obligated, but you probably should um because like let's say i mean there's a lot of for instance like tipping your waiter there's no like laws about tipping your waiter there but, should be but there's social etiquette sorry food service and like no. so you know it's it's like if you don't leave a tip that's kind of like that's you should be punched in the throat yeah like if if your waiter like joked about like if you were in mourning and they were joking about like your family member that died um yeah like that's like i don't know (laughs) a weirdly specific and very extreme example i was trying to think of the most offensive thing a waiter could do that like didn't involve them doing something illegal Okay. So that was that was. That was wildly up. specific, though. <laughs> like the seventy-eight dollars. <laughs> where did you come up with that? Like, where did you get seventy-eight dollars? Well, you said like money that you'd spent on a game, um, and I was like, okay, like let's say sixty bucks is about how much you'd spend, and then I was like, sure, tack on like another eighteen for you know, whatever, like, extra, t- like, little DLC, whatever you want. What didn't mean, like, money, I, it's not, I'm not counting the money you spent to buy the game. Oh, oh, that's I what I was I should have had more stipulations. I, I, yeah, I was, I was counting total money spent on a game. Okay, yeah, I should have had, there should have been more rules. I, and I should know better. I'm an idiot. I should know way better than to just, like, turn you I loose on something. say something random. Like, I should, know, I should know better. Like, I can't turn you loose on anything. <laughs> uh. So, okay. So, loot crates. You know, like, what did... Have you, have you ever spent real... You, personally, have you ever spent real money on a loot crate? Um, I think no, um, uh, no, unless you count, unless you count, um, like, MTG Arena, I think I spent, like, 15 bucks on, like, packs. So, Uh, yeah, that was gonna be my next question, is, like, have you spent... Have you spent real money on specific in-game items? No. Because you can't buy the cards specifically. Um, unless you can't cause... Uh, no, you can't, you can't buy cards specifically. You can use the money to buy packs or to buy... Um, uh, or to buy entries to events. Hmm. Okay. Like, like challenges and stuff, which... Is admittedly the best way to do it because from the challenges they often will award you with more like 
in-game purchasing power to to like keep playing. So like if you're good at the game, you spend and then you just only use like the in-game rewards that you've got to to continue the loop. Okay. But once again, that's I mean it's trading card game. It's it's random. So Yeah, that's like that's like the most random I feel like it it could be. Yeah. In terms so, I mean, of like we're talking about loot crates and you know we're talking about this like yeah. trading card game essentially booster packs and trading card games, like trading card game loot crates are the most yeah. random. Yeah. So I, I think I think we get on the case of loot crates <laughs> a lot. Um but ultimately it's there's not much fun there. Like a, ca- a case of like crates. I don't know. Like a, a crate is technically a case of things. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's like, where's the pun? <laughs> Missing something. Um. So. Yeah. But I guess it's it's not much different. But I think the way you about it, uh, kind of going back to the point that was made way earlier in the podcast, from a design perspective. Like, if you're, if, like, you have to buy the loot crates to stay competitive, I think that's different. Then, like... I think, yeah, as a, as a developer, like, if you're forcing players, if your game is multiplayer focused, like, okay, Star Wars Battlefront 2 had a single player campaign. Like, Call of Duty has a single player campaign, except for Black Ops 4, but we don't talk about Black Ops 4. Yeah. Anyway, point. If your game is multiplayer focused and you have to buy loot crates to stay competitive, as a developer, that's shitty. Like yeah. it's, it's it's greedy, it's unnecessary, and it's bad design. I I think it's bad game design. I would say yes as well. I agree. Because people people are going to call you out for it, as we now know and have seen, thankfully. People will call you out. They'll be like, hey, what the heck is wrong with you? Like, that's not cool. Like, and and I've, I've spent money on in-game items, probably more than I care to admit. And so, you know, I'm I'm a little hypocritical about it, but it it's not you know, it's not a good practice. And and I wanted to mention this earlier about about the auction houses. I like I I love Blizzard and I I love Diablo 3. I will say that. And I will like I will defend that game with my dying breath if I have to. Probably not, but yeah. Point. I think it's a good game. It, the auction house was probably one of the worst decisions Blizzard has ever made as a company, ever, hundred percent. Oh, like as as an entire entity of a company. You were gonna say something. I said I found my phone charger. <laughs> Oh, there's, in a pile, like what? there's in a pile of junk at the base of my bed. Yeah, see, that pile for me is just laundry. I don't, like, put items there because that's how they get lost and you end up thinking your roommate stole them or whatever. Although it would be weird if my roommate stole something from me considering my roommate is my fiancé. That would be weird. Yes. <laughs> um... Yeah, I I think I think that pretty well covers topics other other than any points that listeners can bring up. Um, that about yeah, that about wraps it up. Other than the uh, like weird tangent we went on in the middle of the podcast for like twenty minutes about friendship. You use the power of friendship to kill God. Every Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy, Mother. Yeah. Every JRPG, you use the power well, of friendship to kill God or to kill a well, dragon. 
or to kill the, the dragon season. god. They do that in the first season of My Little Pony as well. <laughs> Wait, what? They kill the moon. Sort the of. Moon? Yeah. They the, kill like, Sokka's they're... girlfriend? They're... Rude. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because, like, there's there's a pony that's, like, super powerful, that's, like, evil, that represents the moon or, or whatever. And they, like, I don't know, they defeat her. But it's kind of a similar deal. Like, she's... Like, everyone's I'm not afraid of her. I think too hard about that, because what the hell? <laughs> yeah. What on earth? <laughs> yeah. I think that's... Admittedly, like, I think that's why a lot of people, and just as a, a weird note to to throw in here at the end, I think that's why a lot of people liked My Little Pony, um, was because... What? Yeah, like there were That's no, why? not that, not they, not that they killed God with the power of friendship, but oh, that no. there were brain hurts. there were the the season openings and the season endings were really epic, like you know there like there were episodes where there were like things that were funny, but you know it it wasn't just like another like funny episodic show like there were like actual like huge story arcs that were going on I, and i think that's why like a lot of people gave it a lot of like a uh, huge critical acclaim but i don't know i haven't i haven't talked to anyone who's like really into my little pony in a very long time so i haven't i haven't like read any kind of critical analysis of the show i'm judging you a little bit Actually, no, I'm judging you a lot, but... Yeah, I watched seasons one and two, and then I was like, yeah, I was like, that was good. And then that was it. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, is it is it toxic masculinity for me to be, like, weirded out that you, as an adult male, like, watched it and enjoyed it? Um, no, I think, well, okay, hold on, actually, let's back up, I'm not, I'm not, like, weirded out by it, I'm, I'm surprised, but, I don't know, I'm, I'm being hypocritical in, in even asking that question, because you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't feel bad or guilty about the things you like, unless the things you like are hurting others. Yeah. And you you watching that to me is is odd, but it's not hurting anyone. So That's true. Do you just don't yeah. ask me to watch it with you because I probably won't. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's a... Uh, yeah, I've, already I made, I I've already made an offhanded comment about the battleship movie, so now we're in for the long haul here. Yeah, every time you make fun of something I enjoy, you have to experience it. <laughs> that would be horrible. <laughs> Just as a general concept, that would be the worst thing ever. Yeah, go build yourself a chaos deck. Have fun. The Infinity Stones deck is basically controlled chaos, but... That's true. Whatever. Anyway, well, you, should, um, you should put Rack the Showstopper in that deck because it eliminates yeah, half the world of some of the new Allegiance cards. We are getting way off topic, and Brenda's going to be real pissed at us if we talk about magic without her. So, final notes. If you have any thoughts or feelings regarding loot crates, cosmetics, in game currency, real world currency, kind of crossover, please let us know. There were a lot of things. In this episode, that was on to- that were on topic that you could chime in on. Please let us know in the comments on Facebook or YouTube, wherever. Let us know so we can um, discuss it later because that's what this show is. It is a discussion, and it's me interrupting Jacob probably a thousand times an episode. I, I wanted to make a. Um, organic for you to interrupt me again, but 
I couldn't think of anything. Like the interrupting cow joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. Ooh. <laughs> that was a little late. <laughs> I was able to finish slowly saying interrupting again before you reacted. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on the Doctor Z right. show. Adios.